Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Bienvenue and welcome to my channel. So last week we had the summer farmhouse tour. Thank you so much for making that a success. If you haven't seen it, be sure to check that out. And there are lots of new subscribers. So for our midweek memory, I thought I'd go way back, about four and a half years, and show you how this kitchen came about, which is really exciting and really cringy at the same time. So don't give me any trouble about the audio. When you start a YouTube channel, it's pure caffeine and enthusiasm, zero equipment. So I went back and I tried to spruce the audio up. I added some songs that I know you'll love. And we're gonna look back at my sweet babies, so tiny, and uh, this, commi this commission, this kitchen in a rather traumatic state. So I hope you enjoy our time together. I'm excited to show you sort of how this whole project all began. What I'd love for you to do is make sure that you are following over on Instagram because that's where you and I can spend a little time together every day with daily posts and reels and stories and you can sort of keep pace on everything that's happening here in our everyday chateau. And now let's look at our midweek memory number one of two. Joel just took the kids to the Y, so I had a few minutes to put together some of the clips of what we've been doing here in the kitchen. So if you're brand new to this concept, uh, my family and I just moved to our family vacation destination in Door County. Instead of buying an old home, we bought a 1980s eco-friendly envelope home, which is so not us. It's not even funny. And we're gonna spend the next few years turning back the clock and turning this place and subsequently the property into a French farm estate. We're starting with the kitchen though. The kitchen was really bad, okay? It had some pretty outdated cabinetry, some horrible old lady wallpaper, like dark blue, like just would absorb the light. Uh, a very dark room. So we are starting by painting the ceiling, which you've seen. It had an electric oven, which you're gonna see we finally got rid of. Our new range finally came. And the idea uh, in this space is just to make it look like a very old European kitchen, which in my opinion has much of a workspace feel, uh, which I love because, you know, I'm cooking from scratch all the time. We're always in this space as a family. What we're creating for the range area is sort of a faux hearth. So if you look at the old European homes, often they had the big fireplace in the kitchen. And a lot of times that fireplace is no longer working. So instead they will put their range in that spot. And so we are recreating that look in this kitchen. Uh, lots of fun, lots of challenges. We've been searching for stone. We hooked up a pot filler, which was crazy because plumbing is in our forte, but we have the new oven. And so at least uh, we're back on track with delicious meals while we work. And I wanted to say a special thank you to those of you who have chosen to support us or to patron us on Patreon. I think it's really cool, um, just your acknowledgement of the time it takes to uh, put out the creative content that we have on the blog and on Instagram and here on YouTube. So special thanks to our patrons and you can check us out on patreon.com if you'd like to do the same. But I hope you enjoy this next little installment of Everyday Chateau. I'm calling it Everyday Chateau, the kitchen phase one. All right, there's gonna be lots more. I got my, kit, my copper out finally. What I have in the basement calling my name all day every day is a huge antique copper sink that we're going to be installing much to the chagrin of my husband <laughs> it's going to be um probably a plumbing logistical nightmare but it's amazing that's going to come in phase two or phase three so enjoy this episode i'll see you around soon a bientôt Is that a smile? Looks good. It looks awesome. A wire hanging out of the wall with a couple wire connectors sitting on top of the cabinet is not code. Like we could put it on your fridge right in the trade here. Oh, that would be brilliant. Yeah, no, we could put it like right here because Look! <laughs> Jeez. 
Oh my gosh. Here, ready? <laughs> ready? And pump. figure out how to shut off that this breaker okay. without shutting off Joel's fan. You no think this breaker goes put over the bathroom? No, I doubt it. Okay. Let me see if I can figure it out. I'm just standing here in case it falls. This kitchen just gets bigger and bigger <laughs> with every minute. I just need a little leverage and nothing can stop me. You can break that pry bar before you can even no, get it off. It's probably some cheapy. It's called the Wonder Bar. <laughs> Wonder Bar? <laughs> That That's what the box called? said. No way. Wonder really? bar. <laughs> there we go. Who's your mama? But dad thinks you're sitting, laying on the couch reading a book. Oh, that's me. That's what I do at lunch. Hi. <laughs> we working together, huh? It's your first job, yeah. Oh, you can tell I've destroyed this pantry in the last four days since since the grocery run. Yeah. Okay. Give her some privacy, Junior. Quick him out of there. Thank you. Okay, go. God, these are cracking me up. You're just, you're hitting a stud -ish. No, he's not. No, you're good. Keep going. What is with those goggles? They're all over. Oh, hi, George, 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 George. Just like. take that out. I don't like it. We we're talking about that little situation right there. The ceiling line. I sneaked in. You sneaked in. Behind is the bathroom. These work. He's getting me gloves. Those work for you. I want to use these. So uh, I can use those. Yeah. You can use yeah, yeah. <laughs> stressing out. What? I said stressing out. Garlic skate butter from the whole market. All right, pass these around. <laughs> Guess what happens tomorrow? What? The oven gets attached. Oh yeah, I know. Okay. 
Did you know that? Did you know that? I knew it. I knew it. Really quick, we're gonna go out to the greenhouse and I'm going to share with you something that I've really been enjoying using to take care of my houseplants and a myriad of other things. I'm gonna take a few minutes in between each of these flashback videos and tell you about my new Vavor water distiller. We love filtered water and there are still so many reasons to have a water distiller in the house. I love this one. It can distill a liter of water in an hour. It's quiet, it's stylish, it's done a phenomenal job for us so far. Uh, for me, I use it for watering my seedlings and taking care of my house plants. That is one of my favorite uses for this distiller, but there are so many other reasons why you need one of these in your inventory. It's super quiet. So I do keep it right here in the greenhouse because this is where I use it the most. But of course you can use it for things like ice cubes, for your humidifiers. There's so many uses. I'll list them off in a minute. I just want you to hear how quiet it is. That's it. You know me, I don't like a lot of white noise. It's very, very quiet and I can keep the peace here in my beautiful space where I love to hang out. The Vever water distiller is convenient and safe. It displays the set temperature and the actual temperature at the same time. And you can be really comfortable walking away from it if you're doing tasks around like I always am because it shuts off automatically at 302 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's great, it has an automatic Shut up. Of course, distilled water, if you are a distilled water drinker, can be used for drinking. The sediment that we found in the bottom of this machine the first time we ran it was um, frightening. It can be used in humidifiers. You can use distilled water in your radiators. It's great for canning. It's excellent for washing your hair. It can be used for canning. Distilled water can be used for washing your hair if you don't wanna wash your hair with tap water. It can be used for rinsing wounds, so it's always nice to have some of that on hand. It can be used in your iron, if you like to iron sheets like I do to keep the sediment out of that water and off of your linens. You can use it in your neti pots. If your husband enjoys the occasional cigar, you can use it in your humidor. There's always a great reason to use distilled water. So what I want you to do is check the video description because there is a special coupon code for Parisian Farm Girl viewers. You can get 5% off the distiller or any other of Vever's great products. All the details are in the description of this video. I try to only share with you products that I use here on the farm and products that I personally recommend and I am quite enjoying this machine and I think you will too. Morning. Okay. Welcome back to Everyday Chateau and in this episode I thought it would be fantastic to finally share with you how we did the faux French fireplace. We are taking this 1980s eco house and dialing back the clock to try to make it look like a 1780s farmhouse, a French farmhouse. That's actually a lot harder than it sounds. So when you have an old house things are already crusty, they're chippy, the floors are creaky, and then you just try to make improvements and work with that. And when you have a new house, you're kind of in this mode of deconstructing and trying to make things look old. And it's actually proving to be quite a challenge. So we did some major deconstructing for this project. Now, there used to be a ginormous pantry that jutted out into the room. I don't know why anyone would ever do that, but it was huge, it had louver doors, and it was covered in blue wallpaper with little pink flowers that was delicious. And so we had some serious demo going on. The kids got to take the sledgehammer to it. That was about the first thing that we did right when we moved in about 10 months ago. Hey, hey, made sure we on dad's iPad a boy. Serious, a French guy on mine. Wait a minute, here. That, that shows you what the floor looks like clean, though. It's got me pretty in here. Yeah, that's the 
that's gonna go. of sheer intimidation because we're not masons we're not carpenters we have a painting background and I'm pretty creative and Joel's super handy but we really stretched ourselves with this project so it all began with my idea to create something that I was referring to as a faux French fireplace simply put when you look at those old houses in Europe and there's a fireplace in the kitchen, but the chimney no longer works, a lot of times they'll put the range right in that spot. And I love that look, and that's what I wanted to create here. And it's definitely a focal point for our kitchen. So where you're looking at me right now, that's where you walk into the kitchen, and this is the first thing you see. So you used to see a huge pantry, and now you see this. So I wanted to have that look of the fireplace scallop on the sides, the stone background, this mama wanted a pot filler for making all those pasta meals for the kiddos and a place for my salt dish and a place to put my pretties and decorate for Christmas. It came out fantastic, but it was really, really challenging. We are both really skilling up during this whole process and it's been amazing. Joel's plumbing skills have gotten better. He did such a great job with the copper sink and he knocked it out of the park with this one. So after he took down the pantry, he took out the wall and ran a hot and cold line for my pot filler. I was so proud of him, so friggin' impressed. And I took cardboard and shaped out these uh, templates or like a pattern for the sides of this fireplace. I learned how to run a saw. We cut these wood pieces. We figured out how to attach them. We had our first experience with Luan, which is like a really bendable plywood. We learned how to get it wet and round it out. That was super cool. Oh, Alright, now what? Right. Hold on, Dad's trying to complete a okay, thought. I thought with the 2x6, we could attach the plywood to the sides of the 2x6 and screw the 2x6 straight to this. Yes. For support. You okay. know what I mean? It'll go all the way down to the floor. And then as well as the plywood. pretty hard curves here and causing a lot of stress on the wood so we soaked it in the bathtub for a good 45 minutes in hot water and then Joel's going to go ahead and score the back of it on the two major stress points and that's going to give us the great curve for the front of the fireplace.
things really got cooking one rainy afternoon, we had already laid the flooring where the range was going to sit and it was time to move on to the back wall. I was really, really nervous. How in the world was stone going to stay on a wall? I know people do this every day, but we're not masons. How are we going to pull this off? So you ready? Yeah, I'm just nervous. About what? Well, just gravity that we're gonna Price stick it. a stone to the wall and it's gonna fall, stay there. Just tell me how much. the stone up and then I'm like how are we going to mortar in between each of these stones and I remember hey I'm a baker and I know how to pipe cookies so I got my piping bag out and my um, frosting spreader and I Joel would fill the piping bag for me and I literally piped the mortar in between each stone it worked out perfectly I had the flat frosting spreader did a little bit with a baby on my lap even and it just started coming together and coming together. Joel and I met on a dance floor, so if you can learn to dance together without murdering each other, you can do a project like this. This was the most challenging. I'll get my pretty herbs out of the way. This swoop right here, and then even going over this with the joint compound, I did not enjoy. But I'm going to show you what I do enjoy. Let me move my bread. I wish you could smell it. I enjoy my pot filler. Check it. <laughs> so exciting. So, so exciting. Pasta is like my go-to bailout meal move when we're low on groceries or when I need something fast for the family. And having this is so stinking handy. He did a beautiful job. I will put the details of what kind of faucet this is because faucets can get really, really, really pricey. Then this one was actually affordable and it had the look that I wanted. So I'm doing six tablespoons of butter. I don't know what do you think that's. Two tablespoons of honey. I'm gonna do three tablespoons of honey and some shallots still from last year's quota day. Chestnuts, apples, and cabbage. And we're gonna let that like simmer and get delicious for about 45 minutes and then have it with sausages. Does that sound good? <laughs> that's quite a face you made. You ready? Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah. Wait, 
So that is our trip down memory lane, our midweek memory. Obviously the children have grown so much. I don't know what's more traumatizing, the bangs, or to see how much my children have grown in the last four and a half years. You saw the stove out with the old, in with the new. We have the new range, which I'm very excited about. And I love it that you come here for creative content and inspiration. If you'd like a little more of that, I invite you to join my Old World Design Society. I teach a monthly interior design class and we have a publication. You can do that by clicking this white circle right here. I'd love for you to stick around on the channel and watch the next video. Of course, make sure that you are subscribed and I will see you again probably this weekend. A bientôt.